Thank you for joining us today on Ekfal. Welcome to the program. I'm Ayola Kasim. A warming planet has meant that in recent years, the dry seasons have become hotter and the rainy seasons wetter. These changes in the ecosystem, as experts describe them, bring with them first fire and then floods. In turn, both of these prompt rats and other rodents to get on the move and run for their lives, fleeing flames and rising flood waters. They invade towns and villages, seeking refuge and food in the homes of people living there. This brings about a risk experts call infectious disease spillover, which is a phenomenon where pathogens make a jump from animals or birds into humans and cause outbreaks of infectious disease. A lot of this has been happening in recent times and around the world. Talk about Lassa fever here in Nigeria, Nipah in Asia and many other places. We'll start today from Ghana to see how climate, changing climate and human activities are making the risk of another pandemic higher. Just stay with us. Walking through Ghana's woodland, farmer Boama Sonka treads carefully. Beneath him, Ashanti plums lay scattered on the ground. Many scarred with bite marks from bats. The saliva-tainted fruit potentially bears bat viruses, but residents at times feed the bats leftovers to livestock. Sometimes people even eat the fruit themselves. When bears or animals eat the fruit and leave the others, some people come and take it and cut the plate the animal eat, leave that place away and eat the, uh, the, the other one. For millennia, bat viruses logged in forests across West Africa and other parts of the world. On the street, they posed little threat to humanity. But today, as more and more people encroach on bat habitat, they are unwittingly helping bat-borne viruses mutate, multiply and infect other species. This collision between bats and humans has been found to be creating health risks across the globe and experts say it could trigger the next pandemic. In June 2022, Brahma's friend, Mahama Fateh, died of a mysterious illness. Lab tests later confirmed the 26-year-old farmer had Marburg, a deadly virus found in the Egyptian rosette, a common African fruit bat. Boama clearly remembers going to the hospital and carrying his friend's body to the mortuary. Mohammed's condition was deteriorating, so he was rushed to the St. Benio Hospital in Dumpas on Sunday. We were told he was dead on Monday. They said blood had been coming from his ears, face, teeth and nose. His body started swelling up immediately after he died. The doctors had to inject him with something for his body to stabilize. When I went to see him, I couldn't recognize him because his body had turned dark, black like a camera. Mahama's infant son died of Marburg soon after. Their deaths came out of the blue. This was the virus's first known appearance in Ghana. But a Reuters data analysis found the area where the farmer lived and worked was among the likeliest places on earth for such an outbreak. That's a reservoir of all sorts of diseases that can pass on to man, can be passed on to animal and pass on to man. Yes. So, as of now, I can say most of the zoonotic diseases are coming from wildlife. And bat is one of the key species that shed parazoonosis. We have to look at the whole country. Where do we have the bat type of bat species? How are people interacting with them? Do we have the caves, the mines, holes, and all those things around the country that are disturbing or that are at the risking the life of people. Widely studied by researchers such as Richard, but are a leading reservoir of viruses, 72,000 by some estimates. Scientists have yet to determine the source of the virus that caused COVID-19, the deadliest pandemic of this century. But of this they are certain, 
Its origins lie in a family of viruses found in horseshoe bats, a type common in tropical Asia. Other bat viruses have also been linked to some of the deadliest diseases of the last half century, like Ebola, Nipah and SARS. These viruses jump from bats to humans either by way of an intermediary host, such as a pig or chimpanzee, or more directly through human contact with bat urine, feces, blood or saliva. Such leaps are known as zoonotic spillover. Actually what is happening now is not surprising. Uh, we detected in 2007, 2008, and published it. We detected the first time that Zaire, Zaire Ebola virus was in West Africa, and people thought it was not true. We reported marble antibodies in bats, and people just take it as usual. So my advice is for us to wake up and listen to scientists, and then start putting measures in place to prevent diseases that could, we could prevent. To examine where the next pandemic may emerge, data analysis at Reuters used two decades of disease outbreak locations combined with dozens of environmental variables. It was found that more than 9 million square kilometers on Earth were conditions in 2020 were ripe for a bad born virus to spill over to humans. Those areas, dubbed jump zones, cover 6% of Earth's land mass and are home to 1.8 billion people. But these jump zones do not paint a complete picture of spillover risks. It is believed that no analysis can capture all variables that could contribute to spillover. Many scientists say the catalyst for outbreaks isn't bad behavior, but our own. First, for resources like iron ore, gold and rubber, to name a few, is driving unchecked disruption of wide areas and increasing the chances for a virus to leap from bats to humans. The bottom line is that there hasn't been any Marburg uh, disease reported in the mine, in the Oboase community at this stage, um, and we remain on high alert. Our doctors at the AGA Health Foundation are on high alert. I know they continue to work with the Ghana Health Service to ensure that from a national perspective, the necessary steps that need to be taken are also being taken. Even though we haven't recorded any case, we have educated our employees. We have notices going out. We have them pasted on notice boards so that they are aware, they are alert, hopefully with the same level of alertness as we addressed uh, the COVID. But governments and corporations are doing little to assess risk. In bat rich Guinea, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana, pending applications will double the territory used for mining. In Liberia, Finance Minister Samuel Tua said that talk of spillover risk has the potential to square away investment the country needs for economic growth and improved living standards. But Mining and Energy Minister Gesta Murray said disease risk management must become part of standard mining practices. Almost one third of that expansion will be in existing jump zones. For us, we are aware of that, and then we also carry that in our awareness meeting around the communities. We inform the community that there are other, there are other sicknesses that are transferred from the bat to hemo. So it's not, it's not healthy for hemo to consume bats, but it's, it's an advice to the community, it's level them to take it in. Some of them don't even take it serious. They say it's not true. They are, their parents, their forefathers have been eating bats. They didn't get Ebola. Ebola is a man-made virus. It does not come from bats. But we carry that awareness around because we know that it is true, it is harmful. Kerala, a tropical state in India, has some of the riskiest of the world's so-called jump zones. It's home to more than 40 species of bats and 35 million people. Its forest, prime bat habitat, have been progressively cleared to make way for farming and development, creating ideal conditions for a virus to emerge and infect people, often with leather consequences. And compared with car known spillovers elsewhere in Asia, the outbreaks here have been particularly deadly killing 90% of those infected. Some scientists view Kerala area as a global hotspot for the potential emergence of a new coronavirus. But another virus emerged there first. 
the Napa virus. Avoid eating fruit clawed or bitten by bats. That's what residents here were told to avoid further outbreaks of the deadly virus, which is finding a new worrying pathways from bats directly to humans as rapid urbanization encroaches ever further into one's remote breeding grounds. In 2018, the Nipah virus killed Mutalab Valachutkati's family members, including his father and two brothers. His older brother, Sabith, was rushed to the hospital first with fever, vomiting, delirium, tremors and violent coughing. Although the CT scan was done, he passed away before the results came in. We thought it was a normal fever, as he had health issues like a shans and ulcer. And so we thought it would be due to internal issues. But the medical report showed that it was something with the lungs. The doctor said that the lungs were blocked while drinking water or something like that. After 10 days, my next brother also got infected. He caught a fever as well. It took nearly two weeks after his death for doctors to realize what had killed him. By then, another 22 people had become infected with Nipah virus. Only two of them survived. But how did Sabith, the first to get sick, come down with Nipah? A search of his family's neighborhood led to a colony of flying foxes, a common foot bat, roosting in trees less than a kilometer from his home. Some of the bats tested positive for Nipah, as did fruit from trees in the areas where Sabith lived and worked. We had many guava trees at home, as my father used to grow different varieties of them. So we had many varieties of guavas in our land itself. We used to have those fruits when they fell down. It is a common thing in our area that we have fruits like mango and all. We don't eat mangoes if they have bite marks, but guavas we eat after removing that part. The fruits are just one theory offered by scientists of how Sabbath became infected. Nipah can infect people when they come into contact with fluids containing the virus, that is saliva, urine, blood and nasal or respiratory droplets. There is no vaccine to prevent infection and no known cure. It's considered one of the most dangerous pathogens circulating in the world and is on the World Health Organization's shortlist of pathogens with epidemic potential. In all the three cases, uh, our conclusion is that uh, Nipah virus got spread to the human beings from the bats. So the earlier uh, outbreaks in Malaysia, in Singapore, in Bangladesh and all shows that always there is a presence of bats, mm -hmm. from bats to pigs, then to human beings and then from bats directly to human beings. Residents like Goku Krishna say bats have become increasingly difficult to avoid. Goku says he cannot leave home without encountering them. He caught and survived Nipah, but suffered memory loss and depression. Long-lasting neurological problems shared by other Nipah survivors. The mangoes used to fall on the courtyard and terrace, but we don't usually use the broken ones. Even when we used to check for imprints on the outer skin. Yes, the big bats used to come to our courtyard. I had seen bite marks on the mangoes that fell down. Sometimes I would take those mangoes and throw them away to clean the pathway and leave my hands unwashed. They say that these viruses are there in the bats. Only when these bats get provoked, they will eject the virus. So we'll ask the people not to destroy the habitats of bats. Let them be there. So we ask the people not to eat uh, the fruits which are bitten by bats. And also we educate our fruit sellers and all to use good fruits not to use of fruits which are have which are torn or where the skin is torn or anything. The fatality rate in the Nipah is very high. It's from 70 to 100 percent. 
and the transmission rate from human to human it's also very high it's 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 multiple times more than covid and the mortality the fatality rate of nipah virus is much higher than covid so covid corona virus so it's uh, 70 to 100 percent so that's why we have to take such strict uh, measures against uh, the spread and also such preventive measures against nipah so we have to take a camera for the challenge In Bangladesh, doctors pound the pavement with megaphone in hand to broadcast nipa warnings. Here, do a different message: don't drink raw date palm sap. In early 2023, seven-year-old Swad Hussein died of nipa after drinking sap from a tree in his yard. We never heard the same of nipa virus, and no one was infected before. So this is the first time we came to know about it. Until people began getting sick from Nipah in Bangladesh, scientists had only seen the virus jump from bats to humans by way of an intermediary animal. It passed through pigs to infect people in a Malaysian outbreak. Now, studies show that through the sap, the virus can infect people directly without passing through another animal. Researchers set up infrared cameras which filmed flying foxes licking the syrup and their saliva and urine dripping into the buckets beneath. Despite warnings by public health officials to avoid drinking raw date palm sap, more than 160 have died since scientists discovered the connection in 2005. Officials say some Bangladeshis, especially those who are illiterate, remain hard to reach despite the government's public awareness campaigns. In the depths of the Amazon rainforest, scientists say the world's next pandemic could start from a cave like the Panaltina cave, which stretches more than 1.5 kilometers deep and is home to thousands of bats. Many more caves like it exist throughout the Amazon. Countless habitats and bat species native to them remain completely unstudied or undiscovered. Brazil itself hosts the third highest number of bat species in the world. Eu não posso falar, eu não sei as outras espécies que vivem em ambientes naturais. I can't say. I don't know the other species that live in natural environments and that we don't know what they are carrying. I can talk a little bit about the animals that are close to us. There may be and may not be an unknown pathogen that comes close or that we come close to it because of deforestation and that does cause a disease. Some of the world's most devastating viruses have emerged from bats. Scientists are studying how and why in hopes of preventing future pandemics like COVID-19. We have no record so far that bats have SARS-CoV-2 and that it is being transmitted to us humans or any other animal. Except for rabies in America, there is still no known disease caused by any pathogen that came from bats. animal But with limited funding scientists there say they don't expect to unravel these pathogenic mysteries anytime soon and researchers say humanity has been lucky to avoid a major viral spillover from the region so far É muito triste saber que a gente é um potencial. It is very sad to know that we have great potential to discover and prevent new epidemics, new pandemics, and this is not being taken into account. Nobody is thinking about it. On the contrary, we are currently having a very large investment in dismantling the environment. Brazil has more land than any other country where conditions are ripe for a virus to spill over from bats to humans, so-called germ zones. We are seeing the importance of understanding which are these microorganisms that can be transmitted to humans in the future. Bats are known to be great reservoirs, sponges of various microorganisms. de vários microorganismos. Analysis found that Brazilian germ zones have grown more than 40% over the past two decades. 
That's 2.5 times faster than similarly risky areas worldwide. You can see that, in fact, the bat will not directly transmit the microorganisms to humans. There's always an animal between the bat and the human. Driving the risk is rapid deforestation of the Amazon region. Scientists say deforestation causes stress in bats. And some studies have found that stressed bats could carry more viruses and shed more germs in their saliva, urine and feces. Scientists and health experts warn the country is still ill-equipped to spot a dangerous pathogen, despite chances of a nouveau virus emerging from the region being high. If you don't do this now, there may be other outbreaks in the future and end up in the situation we are in today of not knowing where this outbreak comes from, where SARS-CoV-2 comes from. And that's a big problem, because if we don't know how to identify the path that this virus took, the evolutionary question on how it got to man, we can't fight it. Our biggest challenge is money, and to be able to move forward in this project, we have to call on foreign collaborators to carry out this great research. A farm caucus representative said that the group supports the president's efforts to halt illegal deforestation, but that legal tree clearing is needed to guarantee food and energy security. The health ministry said it monitors the risk of zoonotic spillover daily through several networks and programs and is studying ways to improve surveillance. In the context of the pandemic, the Amazon region suffered more than other regions of the country because the hospitals in the cities of the Amazon ended up failing to meet a series of other health needs to focus on the pandemic. And in many places, this was not the case enough. And you had moments of collapse in the health system. The response is that we don't have a system the answer is, we don't have a system prepared to deal with the current reality, let alone deal with the next pandemic. We need not only a strengthening of the health system, but a strengthening of the information and prevention system for the next pandemics, continents. How are we going to deal with this? Meanwhile, Deforestation is continuing at a steady pace. Each new incursion offers another opportunity for increases of a new and deadly pathogen to spill over and spread to the rest of Brazil and to the world. We've been told that environmental change is happening at a much higher speed now than before. So that increases the likelihood that there will be spillover of pathogens and microbes, which none of us are adapted to. And when there is lack of immunity, things can spread quickly to the whole human population. Well, the good news is experts believe humanity has the scientific knowledge and the technical capability to contain such outbreaks before they run out of control. Investing now in boosting global disease surveillance and early warning systems and in scientific research to prepare for known and as yet unknown epidemic diseases will mean that, just like climate change, we can begin to cap the rising risks, turn the tide of threat, and eventually neutralize the pandemic potential. But that's our show for the week. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week.